手でも握っておくよ今日のところはお全身で捕まえておいてくださいオッケー、そう、the end of the episode when they're looking at the cherry blossoms。how do they not kiss in that situation。like in not so many words reading between the lines。anybody can basically see that they're basically telling each other that they love。that like they love each other。and they look into each other's eyes。they hold hands and everything。like how do they not kiss and just kind of consummate the whole thing。it is completely okay in life to be reliant on somebody。Who you could consider your best friend, your life partner, and things of that nature, which is exactly what Mahiru and Amane have. They're becoming an inseparable pair for their own selfish reasons, right? And it might not even be like they're really understanding that they have selfish reasons, but that's typically how relationships will really blossom. Like the best ones tend to start because the other person gives something that, they, that you don't have, whatever that is. Uh, friendship, love, warmth,、uh, consideration, trust, whatever the thing is, that's just how relationships are in real life. So I like the writing of this because there is very evident on what hole they're filling for each of the other people, right? Like it's very clear what hole Mahiru is filling for Amane and what hole Amane is filling for Mahiru, right? And It's very clear to us. It's, it's, it's、uh, a testament of really stellar writing. But in that same vein, it's like, okay, well, how do we get to this point here? And they didn't kiss. It's just, it's, it's very interesting. And one of those kind of like a little bit, it's a little frustrating, you know, because like, okay, come on, let's, we're here. We, we've, we've arrived. We're here. Let's go. You know what I mean? Uh, so, it's like, how much longer are they going to drag this out? It's like, we're, we're here. We know we have two awkward individuals not wanting to ruin what they've created. But it's like, we're here. We've arrived at the destination. Let's, let's do the thing, you know?、Uh, so, that, that, that was kind of one of those, like, at the end, I was like, all right, come on. Like, all right, we've, we've dragged this on enough. Let's, let's go and then let's move the story forward. A little gripe out of the way. Let me establish this. I really loved this episode. I thought it was hella cute. I think Amane and Mahiru are hella cute. I think the relationship that they have is hella cute. I think that Itsuki and Chitose's relationship is hella cute. And I love that they are both in their own way now pushing Amane and, Chit- and, uh, and uh, Mahiru in, in each other's way, right? They're pushing them towards each other because they, they see what they don't kind of thing. So, I love, love the episode for that. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of everything that occurred this episode. One of the things that has been most interesting or most apparent to me is the need for us to discover what the hell happened in Mahiru's past, okay? And in this episode, we finally get that. And we finally get the backstory when her mother comes to visit, right? So, she's,、uh, she's on Amane's、uh, couch. She gets a text message. The text message looks a little suspect.、Uh, we, we finally put two and two together that it was her mom saying that she's going to come and visit her. At this point, when she got it, I was like, oh, she got a sus phone call. Who's visiting her? Guardian, housekeeper, dad, mom, both parents. What's going on? You know, I, I immediately said, okay, it's very interesting that her mom's there. Are they divorced? What the hell is going on with how her mom was interacting with her? Very transactional. Well, we finally get the backstory, and the backstory of it was her parents were, were married due to familial obligations. So, financial and familial obligations to probably the different households that they represented. It was probably like a business transaction. They got married, et cetera, et cetera. The one thing that really annoyed me about her backstory was she put that her parents were not in love. Her parents would have gotten divorced if she never came along. But the main thing was both her mother and her father never ever wanted children, and they resent her for even being born. So that statement, all in all, really irked me because at this point, this story is represented in today's. Timeline, right? Or roughly today's timeline. These kids are only 15, 16, like let's call them 16 years old. If we go 16 years back, you know, which is it's crazy to think, but if we go 16 years back, you were talking 2006, 2007 that these kids were born. All right. Like that was the year I graduated high school. Very crazy to me. At this point, 
if mom and dad did not want baby, there is so many options out there for them to not have baby. Yes, even in Japan, you might be like, oh, they don't really have what America has. Yes, they do. They got the plan B. They got the contraceptives. They got the ability to, you know, get rid of the baby. There's a lot of different options there. So that's number one that I have problems with. Second two, if mom and dad were in love, why were they... Why were they, you know, for, for Nicarus? Why were they fornicating? You know what I mean? Like, why were they getting it on in that case? Like, it makes no sense. Like, okay, I completely understand. You're married now, whatever. If you're truly business transactional, you can get your pleasures elsewhere on both ends. But they were deciding to still make that, make the baby. And we all know how that happens. Birds and bees. So it's like, okay, how, did your parents not like each other? Like, they, they liked each other enough to, um bond so it's like it just the story just makes no sense to me and it's just completely silly and completely dumb and if they truly didn't want children they probably weren't being pressured by their parents to have children they were just being pressured to get married to bring the family together i'm sure putting a child into that mix probably brought their family closer together but now she basically since she was born she was raised by servants her parents weren't around they were always gone her parents would get divorced they they put all of their their things that they hate about life on her and now they're waiting for her to graduate college so that they can be free and they can finally live life. It's just all very stu- stupid, stupid, stupid backstory. I don't mind that the story gives context to Mahiru. I don't mind that, that it really drives home that Mahiru has never been loved. All those things where I talked earlier in the review about like you know her needing a hole to be filled, Amani is going to fill that hole for responsibility, for trust, for love, to feel needed to really build her up and and be like, you complete me kind of thing. I think she needs all of that because it's something that she's been uh, lacking or hasn't gotten her whole entire life. I think that it's great to establish that. I just think that what it actually established with her backstory was just completely, it's just so stupid and so unbelievable that even me, I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to wrap my head up. I'm like, just don't think about it. Just don't, as she's talking, I like, just don't think about it. Just don't think about how dumb this is, you know. And I'm going to get over it. I'm going to move on from this. I'm just going to be like, okay, the the long story short, she wasn't loved by her parents, and she's looking to be loved, and Amine is the person giving her the love for her true self. She's very self-loathing. She thinks she's worthless. She thinks it's all of this because she's never gotten love from her parents. I get it. That's how people get broken in real life. And Amine is going to come in, Captain, Captain Sabaho, put the put the – put the cape on and fill all of those needs and make her feel completely needed. I love that that's where the story's going. I just do not love the backstory. Uh, rest of the episode, he holds her. He hugs her tight. He makes a good move. He says not the right words, but she still takes it as the right word. She says, please catch me. All that stuff is really cute. Uh, they go for a walk. She hints that she wants to be in the same class as him. I think that's going to happen for them. And I think once it happens, it's going to be very cute. And I think they're going to be out at school at some point, which is also going to be a very, very cute thing as well. I like how uh, uh, I like how Mahiru uh, admitted to him that she holds the bear tight at night. All those things, rest of the episode, just overload of cuteness. I just did not like the end with no kiss. And I did not like the backstory, that the backstory was just complete and utter bullshit. Everything else was great. Chitose, Itsuki, Itsuki staying with Chitose, uh, Itsuki getting a fight with his dad about Chitose, wondering what's going on there. Chitose having Itsuki stay with her. All the things. The rest of the episode, completely great. Just did not like those two specific things. Still, I still give this easy 8 out of 10 episode. Fantastic. Just did not like those couple of instances during the episode. One, the no kiss made me think that they're going to drag this out to the end if we may not even ever get a kiss or anything like that, which really, really sucks. And the second thing is her backstory is just completely full of just a bunch of bullshit. All right, let me know what you guys thought. Was I wrong? Do you hate my opinion? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Run me through. It's fine. Let's talk. All right, see you guys next week. Peace.